welcome back for another edition of Community Rewind. Uh, you know, this is just week two, so if you missed last week's episode, it's okay. I, I understand we all make mistakes. You can head on over to WLCTV.com, scroll down till you see Community Rewind uh, icon, click there, or head on over to YouTube, WLC on YouTube, and go to the playlist section, and you can find Community Rewind along with a bunch of other great shows there. So, you know, I'm such a nice guy, I'll, I'll give you a second to, to head on over there. Okay, so if you're still here, welcome back. Good to see you. Plenty more of fun to come this week, like what we had last week, as we have EJ Pavey back once again to talk about See You at Home, Dr. Michelle Dickens from the School of Nursing, as well as Lady Tiger head basketball coach Ginger High Calvin. But uh, first, we got to start with someone that you know and you love. Uh, the man, the host of uh, Dialogue on Public Issues that airs Monday nights at 8 and 8.30. Had to throw a little plug in there for him. Uh, Dr. John Channing will join us up first to talk a little bit of the administration side of things, how things have been uh, kind of hard to make some of these decisions and uh, a lot more. It uh, has been a very challenging time uh, in many ways. The face of higher education, like the church, uh, has been impacted dramatically. Uh, back in early March, as the pandemic began to spread and it be began to just be no longer a East Coast and West Coast uh, disease, we realized suddenly that we were going to have to, uh, we hoped, uh, switch to online for a week or two. It suddenly, within a matter of days of that decision to switch to online for a couple of weeks, within a matter of uh, three or four days, we realized we were going to have to do so for the safety of our faculty and staff as well, and our students, a switch to it for the balance of the semester. And I must say that I think our faculty, staff, and students overall uh, adapted as well or better than any other college or university in Kentucky. And we were probably as well prepared as any uh, institution anywhere to make that transition because of our uh, entrepreneurial ability, our innovation uh, spirit and record, and the uh, track record we already had in a virtual and online instruction, with a few exceptions. Most all of our students, undergraduate students, residential students, have taken at least a single or one or two online courses. So it wasn't completely alien. And most all of our faculty had instructed at least one or more online courses. A few had not. But the, even those who had not quickly uh, learned and uh, were very flexible. And that, that is a, a commendable uh, thing. And, and having uh, been uh, participated in numerous uh, webinars and Zoom calls and uh, meetings and, 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 and conference calls with other universities, uh, we had fewer issues of that sort than any other institution I know of anywhere. At the same time, we lost uh, a substantial amount of revenue uh, because of uh, the refunds. We uh, morally and, and we weren't legally required to refund the balance of the uh, uh, room and board for those students that went home, but we felt an obligation to do so. It was not legally required, but we did so and it was the right decision. Uh, we have lost uh, an additional amount of revenue because of there not being summer camps and conferences. The, the real challenge becomes the fall semester. Now summer school is up and going and the numbers are pretty strong. We're, we're pretty well, we're close to where we were a year ago. We had the two very successful C terms where faculty members uh, donated their time that we added uh, after uh, the uh, pandemic hit. That's where the big question mark lies. Right now, the, the number of students who have applied, been accepted, who are enrolling, who have indicated they're coming, uh, who have indicated they want to live in the dorms, looks very, very strong, very, very strong. Uh, looks like a very positive year enrollment-wise and residence hall-wise. But there is looming there the question, as you well know, of what's going to happen. Will there be a resurgence of COVID-19 uh, in, in midsummer, late summer? Uh, what happens mid-fall semester if there's a, a, a resurgence and so on? 
Uh, right now, we are we have announced our intention of uh, having students on campus in the fall and having fall athletics at some level uh, as uh, deemed appropriate by the NAIA and the Mid-South Conference and so forth. Uh, but again, all of that is subject to change uh, very quickly. And there would be no doubt that if there were a resurgence of COVID-19, uh, midsummer, late summer, that it, would, it will affect those numbers. The point here is that we are in the same boat as 4,000 plus other colleges and universities in the nation. Uh, some have already made announcements that there a couple of schools on the West Coast have announced they're moving strictly to online. Uh, other, Purdue University has said, we're going full steam in the fall uh, with students on campus. And so uh, we have said simply, we intend, we our goal is to have students on campus in the fall with fall athletics and so forth to the extent that social distancing and CDC requirements and such allow uh, us to have within the context of applicable federal and state guidelines. We have to and we will comply with those. But depending on what's going on, social distancing could impact the number of students allowed in a particular uh, suite or apartment or dorm complex. It could impact the number of students allowed in a given area, a commons area or dining hall at any point in time. Chapel, uh, our traditional chapel, uh, we're, we're already talking about what happens if social distancing is required. How do you deal with that? But we're working through all of that. Dr. Carter, Dr. Hedgepeth, Dr. Spears, Dr. Uh, Garrison, uh, uh, Mr. Judd, Mr. Uh, Hollingsworth, and, and uh, Mr. Tennant, they're all working day and night to work through all of these complexities uh, and, and uh, to make the very best decisions and to have a plan A, plan B, plan C, et cetera, depending on what happens between now and then. talk about how with technology you can make amazing worlds. Come with me. My team and I bring the Halo world to life. Is that you? That is me. I wasn't a math genius and I knew nothing about coding. But you guys do. You guys have the power to change things. I want your job. I want you to have my job. them enough to drive an hour to cheer them on as they get beat 11 to nothing in the rain, then surely you'll check NHTSA.gov slash the right seat to make sure they're correctly buckled in the back seat. Welcome back to Community Rewind. Last week we took a look at what CU at Home was, what, what's it look like, where the idea came from. This week with EJ Pavey, we'll take a look at last week's post to see uh, what the prompt was, uh, what was some of the responses he got, and uh, I'm pretty sure this week we'll get to feel a little bit of last week's joy. Last week we are actually on uh, week number eight, which is kind of hard to believe uh, that we've been doing this for, for that many weeks um, already. Um, and last week we focused on just kind of figuring out what brings us joy. Um, and so all I asked um, was for people just to send us pictures and 
uh, a brief response of what brings you joy. So, uh, and I think we had um, nine responses, and you know most of them were um, family centric, uh, which is which is always great, um, and I certainly uh, that resonates a lot with me uh, personally. Um, but you know we had individuals that said that you know the beauty of certain things outdoors, flowers, or being able to share in the outdoors uh, with um, their children is are things that. Um, bringing them joy. Uh, and so, you know, all of these are so different, but also very much the same. Um, and it kind of, it speaks to the kind of holistic human experience. I think it touches on parenting, grandparenting, the joy of being outdoors. Um, and we had um, people who also sent in like their favorite uh, Bible verses or verses that uh, help them to uh, remember to be joyful or to find joy. Um, and so honestly, that inspired me to include um, more scripture on being joyful uh, within the, the actual presentation of it itself. So uh, I just I, I enjoy this every week. This week was especially fun, though. My dad actually was the one that ended up sending in uh, the post. Uh, and so he included a picture of our kids. Um, but you know, it's my sister and her husband and their kids and a picture of our now five children. So we've got, you know, two, uh, newborn twins. So that's been quite the adjustment. Um, but you know, it's totally who we are as a family. And, um, as you can imagine with whenever we all get together, you know, nine kids running around, uh, it's, it's quite the chaotic adventure. So... <laughs> I found a lot of these out of uh, Psalms. Um, so let me see if I can find one here. Uh, Come before him uh, with joyful songs out of Job, um, and he will fill your lips with uh, shouts of joy. Job specifically because it's a, a book that talks so much about trials. And I thought that was something that was particularly appropriate. Um, and just for how much you know Job suffers <laughs> in the book, um, the fact that they can still talk about joy there. I thought that was um, pretty important for us, especially as we deal with so many uncertain things and uh, for how challenging our current situation is. And with so many things being unknown, um, we can still find a way to be joyful um, and we ought to be focused on um, finding our true joy in Jesus. see elephants hiding in trees because they're really good at it. <laughs> yeah, I get it. It appears these hot ashes are about to be dumped, which could possibly start a wildfire. How will Smokey deal with such a hot situation? The garden hose defense. Next, a thorough stir. Then, another spray. And finally, feeling if the ashes are cool. Oh, yeah. Ah, yes, the selfie. A ritual practiced so frequently with this tribe, but not so much by Smokey Bear. Only you can prevent wildfires. Wash your hands, stay home, cover your cough. It's our new reality with COVID-19. The anxiety can be overwhelming. If you're feeling extra worried, you're not alone you can still contact a mental health professional. They're ready to help you get through this. And remember, prepare, focus on the essentials. Protect, keep some space from people outside your home, and disinfect a lot. Get the facts at kycovid19.ky.gov. Prepare, protect, disinfect. The American Red Cross urgently needs blood and platelet donations and asks all healthy donors to schedule an appointment to give now. With the coronavirus outbreak, it is important to maintain a sufficient blood supply. Your blood donation is critical and can help save lives. Please schedule an appointment today. Download the blood donor app, visit redcrossblood.org, or call 1-800-RED-CROSS today. You can make a difference. Testing. Why did the girl ask the mushroom to dance? Because he was a fun guy.
Welcome back to Community Rewind. It's been no secret who the heroes have been during this pandemic. All of our nurses, doctors, AMTs, uh, just to say a thank you on them. On behalf of Campbell's University and WLCU, just thank you to all of you, no matter where you're at or how long you've been doing it or anything like that, thank you so much. Uh, and I don't mean this as a joke or anything like that, but some of us literally would not be here today if it wasn't for the sacrifices and the work that you all do. And uh, all those professionals have to have great training, and some of that training can come from Campbell's University in the School of Nursing. Up next is our interim dean of the School of Nursing, Dr. Michelle Dickens, and she's had to figure out some way of taking the face-to-face -face classes and moving those to online, but also figuring out a way to make some of these classes hands-on. Uh, nursing students have to have clinical hours, so figuring out a way to, to get those hands-on skills. And then she also got to see some of her students, some of the alumni out there on the front lines doing things in their community uh, to make this world a better place. So we'll go ahead and send it to the interim dean of the School of Nursing, Dr. Michelle Dickens. In the nursing program, we have two components. One is clinical and one is didactic or in the classroom. So those are the two areas that we needed to look at. Um, with the classroom, the faculty remained consistent with their days of classes and meeting times. So we had face-to-face uh, -face online, not face-to-face -face in person, but online at the same time that we had class at the same um, day for each of those times using the online platforms. Remaining consistent with those meeting days and times allowed our students to have consistency and they were very engaged in the classroom with our faculty members. Best practices for online teaching were utilized in the classroom as well. Faculty were able to maintain one-on-one -on -one engagement with their students for all aspects of the learning experience. All students were also able to complete all of their learning objectives for the course and all students were ready to graduate when uh, on time and without any delays or go to the next course. Clinically, when we think about those two areas, was where the students would go out to uh, healthcare organizations and have a clinical experience face to face. And because students were not allowed to do that or complete that, we were able to develop simulation clinical sessions for all of our students. So again, these act Activities were provided in real time with students as if they were actually attending a clinical site. Faculty incorporated best practices as well as real world simulation expertise to align with the clinical course objectives. That was a great addition to the suite of opportunities that were offered to students. It was very beneficial for our nursing students who were getting ready to apply for the fall semester because that is one of our requirements. So they were able to complete that requirement with the ability to go through the program that was offered through Allied Health. So it was very helpful. We also encouraged all of our students who were working as pre-nursing students and may not be applying for the fall semester. They may be looking for the spring semester to apply or beyond. We also encouraged them to go ahead and take advantage of this wonderful, amazing program that offered them the ability to complete this task. We have many of our graduates, um, as well as our faculty have, who have been working on the front line, as well as our nursing students. The School of Nursing has also helped many healthcare organizations and frontline workers with donations of PPE, meals, and prayers. Our nursing students also wrote and sent out letters that were dropped off at long-term care facilities to lift up those residents that may not have not, may not be able to have visits from their family or outside, of course, no, we couldn't go into those areas, but we did uh, provide information letters, letters of support. Our st nursing students were able to do that and they shared those with long-term care facilities, not only in the local area, but surrounding areas as well. We also had many nursing students who answered the call um, by the public health department who, or the Kentucky Department of Public Health, I may say, might say, um, to volunteering their time if needed to go out and help with this crisis. We actually had a nursing student who during her course of study was asked to volunteer in a long-term care facility. She answered that call, was able to go to a long-term care facility and provide care to those residents with other individuals, such as a pharmacist and a medical student. So an interdisciplinary group of healthcare providers helping during this crisis to manage and take care of individuals in long-term care facilities. 
she actually was accomplishing this as well as continuing with her nursing courses here online. And she was able to balance that. And we were very proud of her. But there are many of our alumni, present Nursing Day students, as well as faculty who are working on the front line right now. Patriotism. It inspires passionate debate. And it's worn like a badge of honor with good reason, because it means love and devotion for one's country. But what really makes up this country of ours? It's the people. To love America is to love all Americans. This year, patriotism shouldn't just be about pride of country. It should be about love, love beyond age, sexuality, disability, race, religion, and other labels. Because love has no labels. If you love them enough to crawl into a play place to get them to come down, then surely you'll check NHTSA.gov slash the right seat to make sure they're in the right car seat. Of questions about the coronavirus? I'm here to share some simple steps you can take to help protect yourself and others. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Wash your hands often with soap and water for 20 plus seconds. Cover your cough or sneeze with a tissue. Clean and disinfect surfaces and objects. Wash hands after touching commonly used items. Together, we can help slow the spread. And welcome back to Community Rewind. Last segment, it's crazy how fast this goes by, right? I mean, you start it and it's over just like that. It's insane. Last week, we got to talk to head coach of Fighting Tiger football, Perry Thomas, about how the football season has been a little bit different, not being able to have spring football, but they were able to finish out their season. This week, with the Lady Tiger basketball team, they didn't exactly have that luxury as they were literally days away from loading up vans and buses and planes to head off to Billings, Montana for the 2020 NAI Women's National Tournament. Sadly, they weren't able to make that trip due to the pandemic. And so head coach Lady Tiger basketball, Ginger High Coven, had to figure out some way of wrapping her head around the career's ending of, of two of the best players, uh, Madison Faulkner, who brought the energy every night, and the floor general, Caitlin Hall. But having to figure out a way to wrap her head around about not being able to have that title run. The Tigers fell, Lady Tigers fell a little short in the Mid-South Conference tournament, so they were ready to get after it in the NAI tournament ready to battle for that national championship. And between you and me, I'll call ourselves the 2020 national champs. I don't know who else will, but you can't tell me any different. I think we'd have gone the whole way. T Lady Tigers definitely had a really good team this year. So let's just go ahead and hear from herself, head coach of your Lady Tigers, Ginger High Calvin. Um, the initial impact of COVID-19 is not being able to be around our kids. Um, so for since the day that we were supposed to leave for national tournament till today, and I, I don't know, I'm, I've lost count of it, of not being able to see the kids and be around them, know how they're doing. Personally, things like this. I'm not crazy about sitting and talking, using the technology. I'm more one-on-one, -on -one, I'm more face-to-face -face kind of person. And uh, personally, I've had to, had to learn to do this. I've had to uh, learn to use Zoom, learn to use those, those ways to talk to people. So that's a, a personal thing. Uh, being isolated personally is, is tough for me. I'm a people person. I like to be around people and uh, not being able to do that's been been tricky but it's also been good for me in a lot of ways. I've got a lot of things done around the house, a lot of things that I normally would push to the side. I think positives for us um, that we've benefited from or at least I hope that we've benefited from is uh, the rest. The kids that that were hampered with injuries all season long um, I think they've had time to rest. I think they've had time to let their bodies heal. And basketball season is, is tough. It's a, it's a long process from August when we, when we move into campus to, to March. Uh, we're getting after it pretty hard. So I think the kids that, that are able to let their bodies just, just rest and heal. And we had some kids that really, really needed that extra rest. Staying in touch with our team has been pretty easy. Um, we all have a group text. We usually talk quite a bit. I know the girls probably talk amongst themselves a lot more than they talk to me, but we have 
forced them into some Zoom meetings and we've talked through Zoom meetings. Um, our, our workout programs had to change completely, so we've, we've had to talk through that and send them videos for that. So that's been a, a not a big change, but, but the Zoom part's been, been different, talking to everybody. Um, as far as recruiting, we were fortunate enough to have most of our recruiting finished before this. Um, we did have one, one player that we were still after talking to that we'd gotten on kind of late in the season. Um, I did FaceTime she and her mom, something I've never done before with a recruit. So that's that was been a big change for us. Uh, we we're fortunate enough to, to get a commitment from her today. So she'll be our first, um, just a kid that wasn't on campus, a kid that I didn't do a home visit with things like that that I uh, normally get to do with the rest of those kids. So that's a big difference. There was an old woman who lived in a shoe. She had so many children, she didn't know what to do. She gave them some broth without any bread and kiss them all soundly Lights out. Good night. and put them to bed. Hunger is a story we can end. End it at feedingamerica.org. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cooked my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. Roll over. When you adopt a shelter pet, you discover all the things that make them unique. And your mother. They're a little bit of a lot of things, but they're all pure love. What's up, guys? I'm Don Smith, and this is What's Cooking Neighbors. So join me every Friday right here on WLCU, where I'll take your taste buds on a culinary journey. And we'll start wrapping things up here for this week's edition of Community Rewind. Hold, hold on, I didn't say leave just yet. I didn't say we're done. I said we're starting to wrap things up. So just give, give me a couple more minutes. One thing that you didn't get to see with head coach of the Lady Tigers is a story about her father. And the time frame that the T Lady Tigers would be in Billings, Montana, and he would be cheering on the Lady Tigers for that national championship, he would end up having to have bypass surgery. Now, a little bit of a spoiler alert, and so no one runs away in a panic. Uh, just days after having that surgery here locally and not in Billings, Montana, he was able to return home and uh, is doing great and wonderful. And it's really good to hear some of those stories of some blessings mixed in with uh, everything that's happening this year. So uh, if you've missed anything this week or last week uh, or anything here on WLCU, you can head on over to t WLCUTV.com. Scroll down to you see Community Rewind. You can click there. Or you can head on over to WLCU's YouTube channel and find Community Rewind a lot, along with a lot of other great shows here um, free of charge from Campbell University and WLCU. Uh, don't, don't tell your neighbors and don't tell your sister that like steals, steals all your accounts or anything. It's free for only you. Just you. All right? No, I'm kidding. All right. So for Dr. John Chowning, EJ Pavey, uh, Dr. Michelle Dickens, along with the head coach of the Lady Tigers, Ginger High Coffin, I've been your host, Alex Smead. And I will see you and your sister and your neighbor and everybody next week at Friday nights at 7 p.m. for more Community Rewind.